This question is from Haley from the U11 team. She said, what is your favorite thing about soccer? Um, I think my favorite thing about soccer is probably just um, all the people that I get to meet. Um, I've played on so many different teams throughout my career now that um, I've just met so many different people that I probably would never have met without soccer. So I'm just so thankful for all the friendships that I've been given um, because of soccer and all the, the unique people that I've met along the way. This question is from Morgan from the U11 team. During the COVID-19 shutdown, what are some skills you would suggest to young players to practice at home? Um, I would say the biggest thing that I've been doing is um, just kicking a ball against the wall. Um, it sounds so simple, but it's super effective. Um, you can just do different types of touches, different types of passes. Um, there's so much you can do with just a wall and a ball. Um, whether that's just like inside of the foot, one touch passing with a ton of repetitions or um, a touch across your body, um, an outside the foot touch, um, two touch passing, uh, chipping against the wall. There's just so many variations that you can create with just a wall and a ball. So I would suggest doing that and um, just some juggling. So keep it simple, but those two things are really effective. This question is from Caitlin on the U13 team. What is the most important skill a soccer player can work on? Uh, I would say passing, just because you use it so much in a game and there are so many different types of balls that you can play. Um, and you have to be able to use uh, all different surfaces of your foot. And um, when you're called upon to make that kind of a pass in a game, uh, you wanna be able to do it. So. Uh, working on just different types of passing, um, whether that's like a curved pass, a long ball, a chip, a flick, uh, one touch pass. There's just so many ways to pass the ball. And I think the more that you can do um, with passing, the better player you'll be. The next two questions are from Emma on the U14 team. She asked, who is your biggest influence? Um, I think... My biggest influence has always been my older sister. Um, when we're only 15 months apart, so she started playing soccer, so I started playing soccer. Um, and as we've gotten older, she's continued to influence me in positive ways. We're super competitive and she um, has a really cool career as well. She works at Netflix and she just pushes me to be better and has always just influenced me in positive ways. The second question from Emma is, how do you keep yourself motivated to train and work out? Um, I think that's a good question because obviously not every day you can wake up motivated and feeling like you want to work out or run a fitness test or anything like that. So um, it's really important to find that internal motivation. And for me, um, I just keep it simple. I think just knowing that whatever I'm going to do is going to impact me and how I play is enough motivation for me to to want to get out and work out. So every time I go out and train or every time I go out and run, um, I try really to to think about that. Just knowing that if I take a rep off, it's just going to impact me later. So um, I try and like remind myself as I'm running like if you slow down or if you don't pace yourself correctly or if you don't sprint as hard as you should or you don't try and lift more um, those things are all going to come back to you in a negative way so I just make sure to push myself always and that motivates me um, every time I work out. These next two questions are from Lily on the U13 team. Um, what are some good things to eat before a game? Um, I usually just like to eat like a banana and peanut butter, an apple and peanut butter, um, and definitely just like enough carbs to fuel you, fuel you for the whole game. Because um, obviously carbs are your energy source and they're going to allow you to keep running and keep your focus throughout the whole game. So um, any kind of carbs you can get in. Um, if it's a night game, I usually just, um, have like chicken and rice. Um, if it's an earlier game, I like oatmeal. Um, if you're going to have like eggs or something, make sure you pair it with some sort of bread or avocado toast or something like that. Um, just to make sure you get enough carbs again to fuel you for the whole game. Lily's next question is how often are you currently practicing? Um, so I'm currently practicing as much as I possibly can, um, probably five times out of the week. Um, 
I'm just trying to stay focused and know that like this isn't gonna last forever. So um, yeah, I just get out there. Again, I, I kick against the wall a lot. I set up cone drills and just do technical stuff and um, running and lifting body weight stuff. So I'm just trying to stay motivated and uh, probably work out about five times out of the week. This next question is from Analia on the U15 team. When should you start really focusing on soccer if you want to advance to the college level and beyond? Um, that's a good question. I think it's different per person, but if you're able to balance different sports and other things, like power to you, I think you should keep doing as much as you can while you can. Um, I started to choose soccer and had to sadly give up other things around my freshman year of high school. But that doesn't mean that you have to too. I think if you're able to balance it and you're able to do both and be successful, then don't stop. I think um, I had teammates in college who were two sport athletes. One girl played soccer and she ran track. So it's all about balance, I think. And if um, you're passionate about more than just soccer, continue doing it. But um, if you need to just focus on soccer, I'd say probably around freshman year is a good time to, to hone in on it and um, start to think about soccer as your future. Jade's other question is, what steps can I take now as an eighth grader to be scouted at the collegiate level? Um, I think in order to be scouted, you have to let the schools that you're interested in know where you're playing. So if you have tournaments coming up, I would definitely email the schools that you're interested in and let them know so they're able to scout you out. Um, I think other steps that you can do is just be well-rounded. Um, obviously, school is super important for universities to see and if you're doing well in school they definitely like that and um, just consist being consistent on the soccer field so every time you have a game there's a chance that a scout could come out and watch you so just take it serious but also have fun um, you don't want to look like a robot out there so just have fun with it but also prepare yourself and um, be well-rounded this next question is from Glenn. When you were a kid, how often did you train outside of regular practice? Um, for me, almost every day, I would say, just because uh, it was not just something that I had to do, like something that I was told to do, it was just something I wanted to do. So um, whether that was just kicking around with neighbors or um, I had a bounce back net, so I would use that a lot, or I would just make my parents come out and kick around with me. Um, I was I feel like I was always doing something with a soccer ball. So um, the more touches you can get in, the better. And um, obviously don't like overdo it and go crazy. But um, yeah, just have fun. Go out there in the backyard and just come up with different technical stuff or juggle, try to set a new record. Um, I always would create games for myself to make it more fun. Like even just trying to kick it through certain things or bending a ball or curving the ball around my house, certain things like that. I feel like I was always just outside kicking around. This next question is from Sophia on the U13 team. What was your favorite soccer team when you were growing up? Um, I would have to say just because I'm from Chicago and that's where I grew up, um, I would go to a lot of Chicago Fire games. So that was a team I kind of followed with Demarcus Beasley, who was a really good player. Um, I followed their team a lot and then also just the U.S. Women's National Team. Uh, I was so inspired by them as a young kid when they won the World Cup. So continued to follow them and still do to this day. This next question is from Sydney on the U13 team. What are some things you do in regards to recovery after practice or a game? Um, I think for me, I know that if I leave the field right after I play, I don't get a good stretch in, so I think it starts with that. Like, I make sure to, like, get a really good cool down, um, stretch out, and wind down from that session or game. And then um, right after that, I refuel. So I make sure to eat, like, really nutritious, healthy food and rehydrate as well, which helps with just getting that water back that you lost in the session or in a game, especially in the summertime. Hi guys, this is Megan Oyster from the Houston Dash. Some of you might not know me yet because this will be my first season with the Dash. 
Um, but my sixth professional soccer season, um, I was drafted in 2015 to the Washington Spirit. Um, but before that, I actually played at UCLA. Some of you guys might know some of my old teammates, uh, Sam Mewis, Abby Dahlkemper, just to name a few. But yeah, I graduated from UCLA in 2015 and then went straight to DC where I played there for two years. Um, after that, I got traded to the Boston Breakers, which unfortunately folded as a team, but it was a great season there for one year. And then um, I just came from Seattle. I played for Rain FC. Um, some of you might know Megan Rapino plays for that team, so it was really cool to get to play with her and learn from her um, as a player in person. So um, this is another exciting year for me because it's another new team. But again, I'm really looking forward to representing Houston and uh, playing for the Dash this season. I've received some really great questions from all of you girls at Pflugerville United, so thanks for sending them. I did my best to answer all of them, and if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to answer them, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys at some of the Houston Dash games.